Hi, Andreas. Hello. Uh, the hard money aspect of Bitcoin has the potential to remove from governments the ability to steal their citizens' wealth through inflation in order to fund corruption and wars. And I'm wondering, do you feel that custodial wallets, Bitcoin banks, may threaten the hard money quality of Bitcoin? Oh, they completely undermine it. They completely undermine it because if you can't steal through inflation, you can steal directly. And one way to do that is just to go in and seize all of that Bitcoin directly from the custodial accounts, uh, which will start happening in different countries. Right? So, again, depending on how you look at it, um, in modern societies, bank robberies nowadays happen in a very different way than they used to. Today, the most successful bank robberies are when someone with a banking license steals all the money from the bank. But it's not really stealing, because then they go and legalize what they just did, and no one goes to jail. That's far more successful than the silly old way of going into a bank branch with a machine gun. Um, turns out a banking license is a far better way to rob a bank. Being a regulator in the banking industry is even better than having a banking license if you want to rob a bank. Being the central banker of, say, the European Union allows you to rob an entire country, like what happened to Greece and Cyprus, and again, far, far better than using a gun, because you just take 10 million people hostage. So the risks we're facing in custodial systems that are a result of centralization and concentration of power become systemic risks. Because when you have institutional custodial systems like that, the people who can rob them are the people who have authority over them. And they don't need inflation to do that. Two-part question. Are you, are you aware of Ryan Bundy or the Bundy Ranch or Bunkerville Standoff or Malheur Wildlife Refuge, where the people stood up against the federal government? Sure. Okay. Ryan Bundy is running for governor of Nevada, and one of his issues is bringing blockchain into government. Uh, first by free is there markets. a question or is this a political ad? What, <laughs> both. <laughs> what would be um, your suggestion to implement governance into the current government? Um, well, I certainly don't think that blockchains fundamentally change how we do governance unless they're decentralized. Most of the proposals I hear from people in this space who grab the word blockchain are indistinguishable from simply saying database or cloud. This is a simple litmus test. Take the proposal of your favorite new blockchain system that someone's proposed in government, replace the word blockchain with database, and if it still reads correctly, it's not really anything interesting. What it is is a highly centralized database where one party is in charge, and that's business as usual with a sprinkling of fairy dust on top. Almost all of the government-driven blockchains I have heard are fundamentally about asserting control over the blockchain, which means they're business as usual disguised as something revolutionary, and they're not. At the moment, we can't even get people to use this as money without sacrificing their independence and autonomy, because, they, as I just mentioned, they go to custodial services. I don't see any way that you can have people use it to vote, for example. And again, the problems we have in our democracy have nothing to do with validating whether the votes were counted correctly or uh, whether there was fraud. The problems we have are... Um, basically disenfranchisement on a massive scale and complete vo voter apathy, because the only two choices you have in our voting system are red Goldman Sachs versus blue Goldman Sachs. And picking the color isn't democracy. Mm -hmm.